Hello and welcome to the VCSP Tech Hub. Today's video is going to focus on the three tiers of the Veeam Service Provider Console, that being the Service Provider Tier, the Reseller Tier, and the End User Tier. This should be a short and simple video. Let's jump right in. So the Service Provider Tier is at the top of the list, and these are the ones who host and own the Veeam Service Provider Console, as well as the Cloud Connect servers required for the console to be used. Now some service providers are both MSPs, managed service providers, as well as cloud service providers or CSPs. So they're gonna host the cloud storage through Cloud Connect, as well as use the Veeam Service Provider Console for visibility and management. Now these service providers can also leverage their console by, by allowing other MSPs to white label their own console. This is an easy way for service providers to offer a web-based cloud portal to their clients for single pane of glass capabilities. But you might wonder, you know, why is this so important? Wouldn't a reseller or MSP rather just use their own service provider console? Well, let's take a look at the second tier of the Veeam service provider console and learn a little more. So the reseller tier is right underneath the service provider tier. Um, these are MSPs who offer backup and DR services to their clients with Veeam. They typically manage their own licenses, they work directly with their customers Veeam environments, open support tickets, run the jobs, do the restores, the whole works. However, a lot of these MSPs do not have a data center nor infrastructure to host and offer backups in the cloud. And since Veeam doesn't have a cloud, they are instead referred to a Veeam cloud service provider who offers these cloud services through Cloud Connect. Now, since Cloud Connect is used to offer cloud storage without any VPNs, and a Cloud Connect server is also required to run the Veeam Service Provider console, most of these resellers or MSPs would prefer to use their Veeam Cloud Providers console or the Service Provider tier, right? The one who hosts it. That is exactly what the reseller tier is for. It provides almost all the functionality of the Service Provider tier but is delegated and restricted to resources and quotas set by the owner of the console or the service provider tier. Now the last tier is the end user tier. Uh, this tier provides the least amount of privilege and access, uh, but it's perfect for a customer to see the status of jobs, you know, create their own alarms and email notifications, uh, and even have visibility and management of jobs. Uh, the latter is perfect for a customer who has their own dedicated IT or backup admin. Uh, they have a lot of the same access to push out agents, um, get status notifications and all that. Now let's take a look at some architecture to understand a little better. So here we're going to have the Veeam Service Provider Console running on a Windows machine at the Service Providers Data Center. We're going to have a VBR server with the Cloud Connect license. And of course, Cloud Connect and Service Provider Console are going to talk to each other. The Cloud Connect server is also going to have a Veeam backup repository. With that Cloud Connect license, it's going to turn it into a Cloud Connect repository so that we can begin to allocate resources to different tenants. And of course, this is all hosted by the service provider, as I mentioned. So the VBR repository slash Cloud Connect repository is hosted and owned by the service provider. This service provider can then go into the service provider console and create a reseller. So we'll start with uh, MSP1 and give them a repository as well as MSP2 give them a repository so imagine this Cloud Connect repository has let's make it easy 10 terabytes and MSP1 is going to get 5 MSP2 is going to get the other 5 then MSP1 is going to log in to the reseller tier and he can create an end user repository one and an end user repository too, etc. Maybe each of these customers get 2.5 terabytes of that 5 terabyte reseller repository. And of course, the same for MSP2. He or she can add repositories for their customers as well. And with that, guess what? It's demo time. So here we are in the Veeam Demo Lab. 
going to log into the Veeam Service Provider console. Uh, at the time of this video creation, we are on version 6. So I'm logging in as the service provider tier or administrator. And of course, I can do anything. Maybe I own my own customers. Uh, I can create repositories for them. Of course, I have access to all of my Cloud Connect sites, you know, full, full range. But I'm going to log in here and I'm going to go down to this reseller tab. And you can see that we've created an MSP. So again, this maybe is that MSP one. Let's just edit this existing one. So we're going to give this reseller a name. We're going to give them a username and password that they can use when they want to log in. Site scope. So perhaps you have a Cloud Connect site in Ohio and a Cloud Connect site in Atlanta. And this service provider happens to be in Atlanta. So you can pick that Cloud Connect site for that reseller so that when they log in and they start assigning cloud resources to their clients, they'll only be able to choose from the repositories at the Atlanta location. You can see here I can set the uh, number of companies that this reseller is allowed to manage. You know, maybe I don't want uh, too many resellers with too many companies overloading my server. I can set the quota as well. So how many agents can I push out from this console? Uh, how much storage and how many machines can I uh, um, accept, right? And so here is where I can add cloud resources for the MSP. So it's kind of like a hierarchy of, of this quota allocation, right? The service provider has everything, the reseller has some of that, and then the reseller gives a little bit to each one of their tenants as we sh uh, showed in the diagram. So this is the repository that the MSP will see when he or she logs in. This is the VBR Cloud Connect repository that the service provider has uh, access to. And then how much of that Cloud Connect repository does this specific service provider, uh, I'm sorry, this specific reseller or MSP get? And again, we can set the quota for the number of machines that are coming in. Okay. If you'd like to set up MFA for this reseller, you can do that. You can send them a welcome email to let them know that they have been onboarded and whatever kind of instructions you'd like to give them, maybe their username and password. This license management. So in version six of the service provider console, we do now integrate with the Pulse portal and resellers can bring over their own Pulse licenses to manage uh, and view in the service provider console that they are uh, white labeling. Uh, if you would like this to work, you and the reseller will need to configure the token and correct uh, steps in the Pulse integration tab in our plugin library. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this video. Okay, and summary here, just to kind of see what you've done and finish. And they are all set. Now the reseller is able to log in and do pretty much everything that we've done from the service provider side, except of course, only for their customers. So with that, let's go ahead and log in as a reseller. All right, so when we log in as a reseller, we're gonna to want to do it in this form. The name of the reseller company slash the username of the reseller company and the password you provide or that you've been provided if you are the reseller. Here I am in the service provider console once again, now from a reseller view. So you can already see there's things that are a little different. I don't have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, this MSP was just set up. So obviously we're not gonna see the protected machines of other clients, uh, the dashboards of other clients. It's just the stuff that the MSP is set up, which we haven't done yet. So if I come in here to companies, I can start creating a company so for instance, uh, an individual user, let's go ahead and go through that. So we'll create a new user here and call this a uh, test customer. Let's give them a username and password. So I've already typed this in here. Okay, and I'm gonna give them some cloud resources. Now, one thing I want you to note here is if you remember, when I was logged in as the service provider, I allocated some resources to this reseller. And one thing I also did was I limited the amount of data that they could allow their customers to transfer out. So if I leave this egress as unlimited and I click next, see it won't let me get past the setting because I as the service provider 
uh, had set a restriction to the egress for, for the reseller. So I need to specify that here. We'll just say, I think 100 gig should be enough. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to give them a repository. So again, when I logged in as the service provider, I had my Veeam Cloud Connect repository with X amount of space. And I created a user-friendly name for my reseller called the MSP White Label Cloud Repo. So now I'm logged in as that reseller and I see the repositories that I can choose from given to me by my service provider is this MSP white label cloud repo with 100 gigs. And now I'm going to give a specific amount of that to this customer. So we'll call this customer cloud repo. And we're gonna set the amount of space to 50 gigs. Click next. Okay. And everything else I'm just going to kind of leave as default. Yeah, I think you get the idea. Um, one thing to point out, multi-factor authentication. So this is available for all three tiers of the service provider console. From the service provider login, the reseller login, and the customer login. Okay. So we'll next. Next. So I can send a welcome email if I would like to uh, for the customer as well for onboarding. And just next and finish. I've now created my customer and that is available uh, to me as the reseller. Some of the other things that I can do here as the reseller, like I mentioned, the plugin library is available for most of the plugins, uh, specifically the VCSP portal, uh, Pulse portal rather, where I can create my own license keys. So this is something that you have to do with the service provider uh, to get those tokens and generate that. And you can also bring your own ConnectWise automate and manage accounts over as well. I've got my own subscription plans for billing and my own uh, license usage so that I can see my specific license keys and uh, then report on to those in Pulse. So last but not least, let's take a look at the end user tier. All right, so in order to log in as the end user, I'm going to once again do the customer name, oops, I believe it was test customer, slash username. And password. So here I am as the uh, individual customer. If I did have any backups that were happening, I could come in and see those, any alarms that I have. And again, I just set up this customer, so we're not going to see any information here. I do have the ability to create jobs for agent based backups, and I have the ability ability to have visibility into my virtual machine backup jobs once those machines um, have been added and are shown inside of the console. So again, not a lot here, but you know, perfect for a customer who has their own IT admin who kind of maybe does their own backups or just somebody who wants more visibility into what their reseller or their service provider is doing. At the configuration tab here, you can see that I also do not have any plugins available, right? So I can't bring uh, a customer's ConnectWise over, just the reseller. So, you know, the further down you get in these tiers, the less um, visibility you have, the less control you have. But really, it makes sense, right, of what you would need uh, from a service provider, from a reseller, uh, from an end user. Uh, and these alarms here, so the customer does have the ability to have their own alarms that are not tied to the alarms of the service provider and the reseller has that same capability too. So there is some kind of separation uh, of alarms between the three different tiers. And that's pretty much it, you know, not a whole lot to see here, um, but just to give you an idea of those three different tiers and what you would be able to see logging in uh, with those tiers. So like I said, a quick video, Pretty simple stuff, um, but very useful. As I mentioned earlier, I talk to MSPs all the time. They're looking for a cloud solution. Veeam is software only. We never want to compete with our ecosystem of service providers, cloud providers. So there's a lot of MSPs out there who are looking for someone to host their offsite backups, as well as have a cloud portal that they can white label for single pane of glass. And so if you're one of those MSPs, let us know. We'll get you in touch with a service provider. If you're one of those service providers who hosts this, 
um, you know, it's always a good thing to uh, promote that and let others know that you have these capabilities and these offerings. Hope you found this video helpful and I hope you have a great day.